at Wagner Edstrom, where she most recently led the team launch for Windows 7 and the Internet Explorer for Microsoft. Last year, her team was awarded the Global Product Launch of the Year Platinum Award by PR News. Noah oversees advertising sales and related businesses and development for the Expedia brands. In, a, in addition to building strong relationships with advertisers and travel, he leads all product development, yield management, and operations related to the advertising business. He joined Expedia in 2002 as the head of the car rental business, and in 2006, he became the VP of Supplier Strategy for Expedia Corporate. Take it away, you guys. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Ooh, watch the okay, ice I'll bucket. Thanks, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, we're here to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in a promotion that we ran called Expedia Friend Trips. Uh, Sarah was okay with me referring to the good, the bad, and the ugly as long as I accepted responsibility for the bad and the ugly, <laughs> and she got the good. So I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to talk a little bit about uh, the promotion. So if we sort of take a step back and look at where we were a year ago, the good news is that we're travel, right? We're not, we're, you know, diving into social, but we're not trying to get people to talk about paper towels or something like that. It's travel. And so we all, we all sort of inherently know that travel is, is social by nature. You think of it yourself as a consumer. I know I am far more likely to post my status updates and my, my photos when I'm traveling than I am when I'm sitting at my desk, as exciting as working with Noah is. And so we knew that we had a really big opportunity as Expedia to be the first you know, travel company to do social really, really well. We wanted to sort of figure out how to do that. And it, you know, the reality was that we did have a, a fan base. You know, we had a, a little over 100,000 fans, but sort of the dirty little secret is most of the people who liked us on Facebook liked us to tell us how much they hated us. And, and that's normal, right? We're a travel company. As it, like, raise your hand if you've ever had a delayed flight and been mad at whoever booked your flight, right? We've all been there. And, and I'm, I'm super proud to say that we've developed a really good program to help those people through social, but some of them just hated us. So I, I went back when we were preparing for this and took a look at some of the things that you can learn about a year ago on our Facebook page. Did you know you should boycott Expedia because we are a front man, front man for the mob? Did you also know that, uh, that we are the most nefarious arm for the devil's army? Now, I have to say, I was thrilled to learn that there's a charitable arm of the, of the Devil's Army and that we're, we're the bad ones. I was shocked at that. Um, so we knew that we had a problem. You know, we have all of these, we have over 60 million people coming to the Expedia site, unique visitors coming to the Expedia site every single month. We had this tiny little subset coming to our Facebook page, and, you know, they weren't having a super positive experience. And so we sort of all looked around and said, we need to make a really radical change. And, and what better way to do that to sort of up the fan base and change the tone, then spend a ton of money. And so thanks to Noah and our partner programs, we gave away a million dollars in prizes in what is still the biggest Facebook sweepstakes ever. So Expedia, as you probably know, is the leading online travel agency in the world. And the way we've been able to do that is through partnership. We've got partnerships with airlines, hotels, destinations, car rental companies around the globe. And when we talk to them every day about working together and selling things uh, through Expedia, it was obvious that they were interested in the social opportunity as well. And they weren't sure always how to do it. They didn't necessarily have a gigantic budget. They weren't sure how to think about a program like this. And to be blunt, we weren't that far ahead of them. But it, we decided to, to work together and come up with the Friend Trips promotion and see what we could learn. So let's talk a little bit about what Friend Trips was. Uh, there we go. I just realized I have no clicker. Let's talk a little bit about what Friend Trips was. So Friend Trips was a game, uh, and it, over the course of six weeks, we got over a million likes, you know, over 700% growth in six weeks, six weeks, which is incredible, and just an absolute ton of engagement. So here's sort of how it worked. You'd go on the Expedia Facebook page, you'd hit like, good for us, you hit like, and you choose one of, these, one of these amazing prizes, these trips of a lifetime. And they're big, big trips. These aren't, you know, bed and breakfast in Poughkeepsie. No offense to Poughkeepsie. But they were big trips. I think our, our, our least expensive one was this $50,000 trip to Seoul, South Korea. And our, our biggest one was a $160,000 trip for you and five of your friends all over South America. These are big, exciting trips. So you go on the page. You select the trip that you want. 
then you invite your friends. And, and you can see on here that there were even ways, if you look at the very, very bottom, there were ways that we had daily prizes. So you, know, you could upload photos, you could comment on things, and so we sort of kept those stories happening throughout. But you, so you'd go on here, you'd pick your site, you'd pick where you want to go, you'd pick five friends, and you'd become the pilot of your own plane. Your five friends each get a notification on their wall that says, Noah wants Sarah to go on a fabulous trip, and, and Kate and you know, the rest of our team to go on this fabulous, we'll call it an offsite, to go on this fabulous trip with him. I would get, I would get the prompt to go like Expedia, to go join Noah's, Noah's plane, and then I would get prompted to go pilot my own plane so that my friend group could get, could get additional chances to win. So really impactful stuff creating story after story after story and appearing on everybody's wall and everybody's newsfeed. In addition to promoting it through the marketplace ads that Nate talked about and through sponsored story ads, we, we promoted it sort of, I'll say, offline as well, although I think everything now is a little bit online. So we had, um, we had ads in People Magazine that tied it back to the, ad the broader ad campaign that we had in market. We also did a lot of PR around it. So we had satellite media tours with, with um, Apollo Ono talking about the campaign in big national press and, and, and on uh, local morning shows all over the country. And we learned a lot. So what did we learn? Um, well, we got some really great customer feedback. My favorite was the guy who wrote in and asked us if next time we could have a prize specifically for his mother-in-law that would allow his mother-in-law and four of his friends' mother-in-laws to land someplace but not take off again. <laughs> um, seriously, we, when we went into this, as I mentioned, we, we were, this was viewed as a, an, a, an important experiment and learning opportunity for us and our partners. And as part of that, we engaged Compete, a market research firm that you're probably familiar with, to help us look at what other people in the marketplace were doing as well look at the results of our promotion, look at the results from leading travel companies that you've probably heard of, like Delta and Las Vegas, and also look at leading retailers like Best Buy and Target, who not only have a major, major fan base on Facebook, but also have a, an important online retail presence as well. And we went into it asking the question, is bigger better? You know, um, as a five foot seven on a good day kind of guy, I have a pretty clear perspective on whether bigger is better, but um, I think a lot of this came from people looking at the Mashable in infographic of a couple of years ago. How many of you so have seen that infographic? I think it was about two years ago. They came out with an infographic that showed about 139 brands that already had accumulated a million or more likes on Facebook. Now, of course, there are probably thousands of major brands that have a million likes. And the, the question I think the infographic posed was, is that the right way to look at a Facebook promotion? Or is there another way to look at it? Um, and so the compete research and the results from our promotion really helped focus us a little bit. And we learned some really interesting things. What we learned, um, how many of you got a chance to go to the panel discussion a little earlier today? It was a fabulous panel on stop wasting your money on social, I think. There were folks from Kenshu and WPP on the panel. It's an amazing panel. If you didn't get a chance to go to it, I recommend you check out the video. One of the things that they talked about is likes, and I think that also has come up in a couple of the main stage presentations, and how that's a little bit of a, 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 a poor metric, I'll put it that way. And what we learned is that engagement, like the, the core point I think made at the panel, really was for us a better uh, way to look at the value of this promotion. People who interacted with the, the friend trips sweepstakes we're more likely to come to our, to our brand.com page, to Expedia.com. They were more likely to spend more time when they got there. They were more likely to buy something. So you have incremental bookings, significant incremental bookings for us and for our partners. So we got a great ROI in, the, in, the, um, in a very, very tangible way uh, when we looked at engagement and who was really interacting with our brand pages on Expedia, not just the people who are liking us. And that might be helpful to show a good example of what good engagement looks like. And I'm going to be super honest, if, and you'll see this in, in Noah's next couple of slides. Um, when we got these million fans, we all sort of looked around and said, 
oh my gosh, we have a million fans. We kind of didn't think what, what comes next and how do we engage them? And we, I, I'll be the first to say we had some embarrassing questions. So I do think at some point we asked the entire million fans, what's your favorite color of flip flops? You know, the kind of really good, strong stuff that ties you to a brand. Um, and so, you know, we learned a lot from that and, and we'll sort of talk about that as we go. But we wanted to share this example. Um, two weeks ago, we declared it Vegas Week across all of our social media properties. So across Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and Pinterest. It was all Vegas all the time. And you know, it turns out everybody really likes Vegas. It's a pretty easy topic, but it's also about travel. It's emotive. You know, people can, everyone has, can decide, do they love Ocean's Eleven more than they love Hangover? For me, I love the What Do Tigers Dream Of song. So I have a pretty, pretty clear pick, even though there's Clooney in the other one. Um, but so we had a really strong promotion. Every day we had new hotels that we were spotlighting, and they, some of them were hotels that are, everyone sort of thinks of as really fancy, like the Aria and the Cosmopolitan. Some of them were hotels that really needed to get the message out that they had been totally redone. So you wouldn't recognize things like the Flamingo and even the Golden Nugget if you went today. Really radical changes to a lot of these hotels. And so they, to Noah's point around partnership, they really needed a brand like Expedia to help them get that story out. So, uh, what were the results like? So over the course of the week, we had over 14 million impressions. Almost all of our posts had more than 400 likes, and every one of those likes, we put a sponsored story behind so that you saw it in your friend's newsfeed that they were engaging with Expedia around the topic of Vegas. And we made a really good, solid connection between Expedia and Vegas, which it turns out is a pretty important destination in the, in the travel space. We also asked lots of really fun questions, and so it was important from a brand standpoint. You know, questions around what's your favorite movie and what do you like to do when you're in Vegas? No one goes to like the Elvis Museum and everyone lies about what they do, what, all the other stuff that they do. Um, so in addition to having all of those impressions and, and building that strong brand presence, we also looked at how did that, how did that actually work out from a bottom line perspective? Um, Across the board, you know, so we had this over 400% lift in engagement. There was a gaming sale going on at the same time, and that gaming sale across the board had a really solid lift. And then we looked at for each one of the hotels on the day that, that they were featured, what kind of difference was there year over year and in comparison to how they performed the rest of the week. So on the days that social was the only thing that was different, almost every hotel had double digit growth year over year. And so incredibly powerful for us, incredibly powerful for our partners, and a great brand conversation to help consumers feel really connected with Expedia about a topic that everyone can get, can get on board with. So what else did we learn? Um, from the Compete study, so th this chart that's up here right now shows visits to our Facebook page. And you can see that pretty significant ski hill in the middle, which represents the peak of, of the Friend Trips promotion. You also notice that some of the other brands that I mentioned that we included in the Compete study are included here, like Target and Best Buy and Visit Las Vegas. So a, a couple things to note. Um, you know, one is obviously when you do a promotion like Friend Trips and you back it up with the kind of effort and marketing investment that Sarah describes, you're going to see increased engagement on your Facebook branded pages. And when you're not, I think it's more difficult to get engagement. The spikes in the other graph, so I'm still looking at the, at the graph on the left, the spikes in the yellow line, which is Target, and the spikes in the blue line, those also represent promotions that Best Buy and Target did, like Deal of the Day or Summer Specials or whatever they were. So similarly, when we saw friend trip, people who came to our branded pages on Facebook around the Friend Trips promotion also went to Expedia, spent more time there, and bought more things from us and from our partners, there's a similar correlation for our partners. So when they run, ran sweepstakes or promotions or deal of the day, they also saw a lift in terms of traffic to their brand pages. I want to specifically call it Visit Las Vegas. As Sarah mentioned, Vegas is a, is a huge destination for travelers and travel aspirants around the world. Everyone wants to go to Vegas. My eight-year-old runs around the house screaming, Vegas, baby. And I don't even think he knows what it means. So I, I sure hope he doesn't. Um, and, uh, Good one, Dad. Good decision. Yeah. Yeah. Sheltered child. Um, so uh, visit Las Vegas. If you look on the chart to the left, that's my left, um, you'll see 
is, has, does not have a lot of engagement on Facebook, even though they have a phenomenal destination that they're marketing. So I think that just emphasizes the importance of partnering uh, in getting a sustained level of engagement both on Facebook and on your brand pages as well. So just like with the Friend Trips promotion where we saw that when people interacted with our brand pages on Facebook, they bought more from us directly, the, that was true in the Compete research as well. So the way to look at this chart is people who visited the brand pages on Facebook that are there from Best Buy were 37% more likely to buy something from bestbuy.com. So we know that it's not just travel companies, it's not just uh, it's not just about sweepstakes or promotions, it's about driving sustained engagement which will then lead to increased transactions for all kinds of folks that are in the online commerce space. So it sort of begs the question, what are we doing now and, and you know, sort of how are we moving forward? I think the thing that surprised us the most, and, and maybe it shouldn't have, but you know, if we sort of think about where we were at the time, is that the network effect really works. You know, we, there's always the risk when you do one of these big acquisition campaigns that everyone will show up and then either everyone will dislike you or unlike you or that they'll just sort of sit there and they won't engage. And, and what we were amazed at is that the more people you had sort of having good positive conversation, that that led to more and more people having positive conversation. And so our engagement per thousand numbers are higher. They were higher right after the campaign. They continue to be higher than they were before the campaign, which I think was really striking. And so there's sort of three ways that, we're, that we've sort of acted on that and sort of changed our tune. The first is around this idea of quality. And we sort of talked about the value of partners here. It really is true that Quality engagement comes from quality partnerships, or comes, comes in quality content, which comes from quality partnerships. The second is to really know and differentiate your platform, and, and we, we can talk about that a little bit. And then the third is really finding efficiencies in, in your ad buys, um, much along the line of what, what Nate talked about. The first one I want to talk about is this idea that quality matters, and you sort of know our flip-flop story and what a flop that was. Um, we've got, we have some other really good examples that we've done recently. We had a luxury sale recently and had um, the Banyan Tree, which is this absolutely incredible uh, resort where the rooms start at 3,000 square feet. So really, like when they say luxury, they mean luxury. So we have this beautiful photo montage showing off a lot of these, a lot of these luxury properties and a great, great lift across the board and had really good engagement. Again, it's very aspirational. People love that. And we, we did very well on Facebook. And again, did very well on, on new platforms like Pinterest that are so, so based on sort of travel aspirations. And then we had great things like um, we sent one of our employees on a, on a Disney cruise. We're sending a blogger on the Disney fantasy uh, next week. And the neat thing about the Disney promotion is not only is it something that appeals to our fan base, but it's a great opportunity for cross promotion. So you, know, you sort of think about a fan who likes Disneyland or likes Disney cruises already is a much more valuable fan to us, and a fan who likes Expedia is a much more valuable fan to Disney. You, the more you can sort of increase the people who are actually likely to be both you know, travelers and customers and to sort of be the travel roddy in their own community and be the people, you know, everybody's got that friend who when you're going to go on a trip, you ask that guy, oh my gosh, where should I go? What airline should I go on? But the more we could sort of find those people and share those through those partnerships, we found that that was really helpful. The second is know your platform. Um, when we first sort of finished Friend Trips, we had about 21,000 followers on Twitter, and our Facebook calendar, our Facebook sort of editorial calendar was, was really solid. And our Twitter editorial calendar was also super solid if you consider copying and pasting a really solid strategy. We were Dead on, we really nailed that one. And then, you know, as we've sort of evolved, we've really looked at those two platforms as very different things. You know, there's a, a lot of broad consumer engagement that is important, but, but a little bit more shallow and a little bit more transactional on Facebook. And then you look at Twitter, where you have people who brand themselves as being all about travel, who, you know, talk about, they have, they have that limited space, and that's what they talk about. And we've really differentiated those two. We've got uh, Spencer Spellman is a travel blogger who's in the audience who uh, runs our, our weekly uh, travel chats. We have people who are engaging for 90 minutes every single week with Expedia to talk about travel. And that's really powerful engagement. That's a lot of time that, that folks have. And you know that they really, um, they're really forming a really strong, strong bond with those people who we call it sort of the travel roddy. When you think about emerging platforms like Google Plus and Pinterest, both have 
great opportunities for experimentation, really interesting SEO implications, but such different audiences. You couldn't get two more different audiences. And so we're looking at a lot of different experiments on things like Google Plus around, gosh, how do we really position ourselves as a technology company? And how do we think about the SEO implications of getting our mobile and our tablet apps in front of that audience who cares a ton about technology and they're willing to sort of have those good conversations and where we sort of need some SEO help. And then on Pinterest, very, very different audience. I mean, I don't think I've actually gotten any work done since I got on Pinterest. I'm pretty much the exact target audience there. But people who we really want, as they, as they aspire to these great trips, having them connect that trip right from the beginning and throughout the planning process to Expedia is, is really, really interesting. And then if you consider that there's potential SEO implications there, there's a lot, there's a lot to do there. But gosh, you can't treat those platforms as the same platform at all. Copy and paste just doesn't work across your editorial calendars. And then the last one is finding efficiencies with your ad buys. We talked a lot about sort of marketplace ads and these premium ads. Um, and I'll say we have found that sponsored stories are, are a great way to go for us for, for longer-term campaigns. And so I want to use the, this example of the um, Groupon Getaway's uh, winter app that we did. So it, it's an app that's around, all centered around the idea of giving the gift of travel for the holidays. So we did it during the most expensive time. You know, if you want to buy expensive ads, like go sign up for the day after Thanksgiving through the day after Christmas. Like, that's how to spend some money. Um, and so, you know, we, when we started that campaign, we did a lot of the, the premium ads and a lot of marketplace ads to really get that campaign going. But then as each engagement, gave you sponsored stories, or gave you stories to sponsor, we switched to sponsored stories, and we spent about a quarter of what we would have spent on marketplace ads on sponsored stories, and got five times more likes through the, through the sponsored stories, which was really, really powerful. So you may say, you know, how do we sort of think about friend trips today? You know, when we, when we rewrite the lore of friend trips around the hallways of Expedia, what do we, what do we sort of think? And our take is that there is absolutely a role for these big acquisition campaigns in the life cycle of your social media strategy, but that it's not, it's not the be all and end all. As you pursue these, kind of, these kinds of, of programs, you really want them to be social by nature so that you can make the most of them. You wanna have them so that they're creating stories that you can sponsor, so that you're engaging people in the feed. Because I think we all, we all come to social thinking, oh, it's about our wall. Everyone's gonna come to our wall. And the reality is, think of it yourself. You know that when you engage with a brand, you're typically engaging with them right in your own feed. And that's an important point to make sure that those stories are appearing over and over and over again. So that's really critical. And the, the other piece of it is partner up. Like, there are so many companies, especially with a business model like ours, but there are so many companies that you can find really good areas to cooperate and coordinate, build those fan bases together, have higher value for the customers, and then ultimately have, have higher value for your partners. Any questions? Oh, or are we supposed to wait for the three things? <laughs> I think we answered everything. I think Noah. so. Good job, Sarah. One of the things you opened up with at the beginning is you said we had to go online and do this big acquisition campaign and spend a lot of money because we had only a fraction and they were all saying negative things. Like, how big was the money here? It was spent? real money. I mean, it was real, real money. So we had a million dollars worth of prizes, and, and fortunately, a lot of that um, came in through, through Noah's partner groups. Um, but, you know, we spent we spent real money on, on the ads. You, know, you think about ads and people. You think about getting Apollo Ona as your spokesperson, and then you think about all of the, the Facebook advertising that went into it. But the partnership helped offset the That's expense right. and helped us learn together. The partners got out of it the value of, of right. participating in the promotion. They got, they got the network effects of being getting the exposure through the, the marketing spend that Sarah's talking about. So they got in-kind and co-op exposure through the investment we made in media. And so that was another value in the partnership that, uh, and that, that, that's, right. that's important to note. That's right. And I think we, we sort of think of it as, as almost amortizing that money over, over multiple years because it, that big spend up front has given us the luxury to do a lot smaller spends now. So not everything has to be this big, huge app. You look at Vegas week, I mean, huge results over a week. 
both in terms of brand and in terms of transaction. Big stuff. Really cheap campaign. And if we didn't have that base, we wouldn't have the luxury of running programs like that today. Hi, just had a question about uh, measurement. So it seems like before you did these campaigns, uh, you weren't really spending a lot of time watching Facebook. I may be wrong, but correct me if I'm wrong. But when you did do these uh, campaigns, you measured the difference from, you said there was 136% improvement in this, et cetera. I don't have the numbers in front of me. But I was just curious how you knew that these were not people who were using Expedia beforehand and it, they would have used it anyways. Uh, was there, what metrics did you use? How did you know what the uh, improvement was? I mean, some of them may have been customers who, were, who came beforehand. We certainly um, targeted some of our customers through email to get them to be excited about front trips, for example. I mean, we've got a pretty big email base with, six, with over 60 million unique visitors. Our email base is really strong. I think what we've, what we've really looked at in terms of measurement is the, the value of those customers and whether or not a customer who just interacts with Expedia.com is, is as likely to transact with us over and over again as a customer who, who interacts with us on Expedia.com and on our Facebook page. And so I, I, I guess my challenge back to that would be, do we really need new customers or do we really need a way to continue to reach our, our existing customer channel so that they stay with us? I mean, you know, in particular in something like, with a business like Expedia, there are options for folks to go to and we really want to have that loyalty. When we look at customers who come in to us through email and come into us from Facebook, we know that folks who come in to us from Facebook are much more likely to come back and transact or uh, sorry, the ones who get email and Facebook are much more likely to transact than just the ones who sort of get to us in just search or, or in search plus email. Yeah, remember that the nature of what we're selling is travel, which people think about and aspire to. You're probably thinking about a beach vacation right now. I can see it in your face, but they don't actually purchase it constantly. It's not like Nate's product where I have to block it in the router if That's I right. want to remain financially solvent at my household. So. <laughs> um, it, there's, a ver there's a high value to us in building that engagement and the, those channels for engagement, whether it's through a Twitter or a Facebook. Being able to keep the dialogue up means that when you take the daydream about your beach vacation to action, you think of us and you come to us and, and uh, buy from us. You're thinking, You're thinking about, about Vegas? Vegas? I mean, who isn't thinking about Vegas right now, right? Or at least hangover. That's good. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. guys.